Hello YouTube. Welcome back to my garage. Um, I'm going to start this video, <coughs> start this video, yeah, by apologising for my voice, which uh, keeps breaking like I'm going back through puberty. Um, it's not my fault. I was at a wedding about, what are we on now? Saturday? Yeah, about a week ago down in lovely Kent. Um, a good friend of mine, Gavin Gavin Jones, who apparently watches this channel, uh, married his lovely girlfriend, well now wife, Lauren. Um, and who else? Yeah, caught up with some other friends there who apparently watch this channel as well. Jam and Dean. Hi guys, thanks for watching. Um, and caught up with some other friends that I don't care about, like Mark. And, uh, <laughs> I'm joking, Mark. Um, yeah, and then we went to Brands Hatch as well, which was just a great weekend. Uh, saw an epic crash on the last corner, by the way. Go and, uh, YouTube Brands Hatch, October 2021. Uh, coolant on the track. Bikes flying everywhere. Madness. Great fun. Anyway, <clears throat> either from Brands Hatch or the wedding, I came back with a cold. So, that's fun. I've uh, been struggling a bit this week. But uh, I'm on the mend now, but my voice does just keep kind of going weird every now and then. So, yeah, just you can just laugh at that. Anyway, what's this video actually about? It's not about me and my cold. It's about ABS sensors. Yeah. Um, so if you have watched any of my other videos, you'll know that uh, I have refurbed my rear subframe. Um, it's all lovely and shiny. However... To do that, you need to remove the subframe and strip it down. And to do that, you need to remove your ABS sensors. And I won't be the first person to have run into issues removing these. Um, although they look lovely and clean and lovely now, and they're greased and they slotted back in all right, when you take them off, this aluminium housing here, uh, what's this called? Hub carrier, is it's just covered in corrosion and that hole becomes very tight and you just cannot press this out. This is a plug, goes, it's got a black plastic top and then about an inch long shaft. <laughs> Good word for a Saturday morning. Um, yeah, and it's covered in a very thin stainless steel cover. Great design, Jaguar, it's quite fragile. And anyway, when you press it out, you end up damaging it and that ruins the clearance between that and the spinny cog thing of ABSness that is in there. So then when you put everything back together, um, you very unsurprisingly get an ABS fault, even after you've bled the brakes and everything and driven it. Because if you do get an ABS fault on these cars, you do need to do something, you need to fix something, and then you need to go drive it at over 15 miles an hour for a period of time before the ABS light will reset. Um, just worth noting. But anyway, it wouldn't matter how many times I drove this car, you're not going to get that fault to reset because when you run the diagnostics, it confirms my fear. I have damaged at least one of the rear ABS sensors. It is. I'll show you how to do the diagnostics and read the codes. Believe it or not, even on a 1994 car without OB, OB, OBD, OB, OB1. No, that's Star Wars, isn't it? I don't know what it's called. That OB, E, D, 2 thing that nowadays you just go into a garage and you plug in. It tells you everything that's wrong with your car. This car doesn't have that, but it does have a very old school diagnostics tool for ABS, uh, which I didn't know until I broke mine. So that's fun. Um, so we'll run through how to do that, how to read the codes. You can get them, if you're lucky, secondhand off eBay for about 80 quid. I think new, they're like 350 and I don't even think you can get them. So I have found a couple on eBay. Um, in Lithuania or somewhere, but I've bought from those guys before and it's always fast postage and the items are always very clean. So I've got no problem uh, at least risking 80 quid. Um, you, you never really know with an ABS sensor. They say it's been tested and blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> but until I put it on and drive the car, frankly, I don't know. And that's just a risk I'm going to have to take. But for 80 quid, um, I, I'm kind of happy. There are, I did chat with Simply Performance in the UK as well. And they are talking about um, producing a uh, a replacement ABS sensor, uh, a bit of a different design. So if 
the second hand option doesn't work, I may get back in touch with them and go down that route. Um, so that's good. I have options because, yeah, uh, getting new ones is just pretty much impossible. So first job is to run the diagnostics. Uh, I may as well just show you that, how that works before I start taking anything apart. I'll go and get some stuff. So first off, you're going to want to open the boot. Um, then I have to install this uh, factory strut. <laughs> yeah, I need to get some new gas struts. Stop being so noisy. Um, and then you're going to want to go in, in there uh, and remove that bit of carpet. Um, depending on how you've got your car set up. I've got my little toolkit in there. You might have your CD player if you've got a CD player fitted. But anyway, <clears throat> yeah, you need to clear clear a bit of space and, and get rid of that bit of carpet. Just chuck it out the way. Actually, before you go over there, though, well, it depends how your garage is laid out. My garage, to go over there, I can either open the door because I haven't got room to get around the front of the car, uh, or I can go under the car, which I usually do because I can't be bothered to open the door, especially in winter. Um, so before I go on that epic voyage to the other side of the garage, um, I want to get some staples, which may seem a little bit odd. Focus. Focus. There we go. But yeah, I would like one staple, and I'll explain why I want a staple in a minute. Right. So I have been under the car, which I can't do, by the way, without singing the Mission Impossible theme tune. It's just, it's just like a rule. Um, yeah, so in this <coughs> wheel arch top recess thing, um, somewhere you'll find this random connector, uh, which is just flapping about. Just zoom in a bit. Uh, so it comes off, uh, I don't know where, I assume it's in the same place on all cars, although being Jaguar, it could just be in a completely different place each time, depending on who put it there, but mine comes off the main loom over over there and then I've cable tied it to the fuel runoff thing. Anyway, you'll see, uh, if I can just get in there, I may have to sit in the boot to do this. You've got three pins in use. You've got a black wire, a red wire, or red and black, and a brown and pink wire. Although it looks white, it is pink. What you want to do is get the very specialist uh, jumper tool from Jaguar and jump those two. Uh, or you can get a staple. Now it makes sense why I've got a staple. And we're going to jump across, basically, from pin one to pin three. So I'm going to stick that in. I can't do that one-handed. Right. So I'm sat in the car. Um, you do need to make sure... Uh, I just tried this and I hadn't quite managed to jump those two connectors. I didn't have uh, metal to metal contact. Obviously, using a staple uh, isn't quite as efficient as I thought. But a little bit of tweaking with the staple and I've made sure uh, the two the two are properly jumped and now uh, so if I was to start the ignition now we're not starting the engine we're just turning it to full full ignition but not starting um, the ABS light would come on and just stay on to say we've got a fault but because we're in diagnostic mode now you will see uh, first of all nothing will happen it won't illuminate and then it will illuminate flashing and I've got a piece of paper and a pen ready. Um, I think I can remember the codes, but obviously the first time you do this, you might forget. And so yeah, see what we get. So you see no ABS light. And about now we should get one, two, a gap and one. So that's your first code, 21. Now you're gonna have to wait about six seconds and see if there's any other code. Ah. So three, 33, 33. So we'll just wait and see if there's any other codes come up after another six seconds. No, okay, so we'll just do that again, just to confirm. So we should have two and one. Yep, there's 21. About a six second gap. <coughs> That's three and three. Yeah. 21, 33. Right. Big green book of nonsense is 
living up to its name yet again. Uh, despite having <coughs> everything apparently in there, I mean, you should be able to build an XGS using that book. Um, they didn't bother to include the procedure that I've done today, nor did they include uh, the list of these codes. I had to find that on the internet. Just, just great. Anyway, um, I'm going to ignore that 21 for now. 33, as I knew, was sensor rear right uh, failure, out of line, whatever. So we're going to address that. 21 is valve failure. Uh, it's like a major failure code. However, I'm not going to put too much thought into that right now because a bit of internet research suggests that um, if you have any ABS code, you get code 21 anyway. Um, it's basically the system saying, hey, something's wrong and then 33 is your problem. So if I fix the 33 fault, I'm hoping the 21 fault code will disappear too. I don't know. Um, we'll just see. Uh, if it doesn't, then I'll have to uh, dig a bit deeper into that and find out what that 21 code is. But uh, I'm not going to worry about it for now. I'm going to focus my attention on this uh, fault 33. We need to remove the rear seat swab um, I can't remember if these are separate or not. I'm, I'm going to find out in a minute. So under here, oh, there we go. We've got two bolts. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in. There we go. That's nice here. That's been fought with before, hasn't it? What size do you reckon they are? I don't know. Let's go and try some. Oh. oh, that's a pain. Yeah, so I've done this one with a deep 10 mil, but I can't get on that one. Not like that, anyway. Try 10 mil ratchet spanner. Let's see if that'll go in there. Wrong way. Wrong way, idiot. There we go. Nope, no. I want that satisfying ratchet noise. Let it just loose by hand now. Yeah. It's not awkward at all. There we go. So there's two of those. I've already taken the other one out. Let's just sit get the lifts out then. That on the floor. Hmm. I've been in here before. Let's just have a little careful dismantle. Maybe this is nice. This is factory. Probably is, to be fair. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to have to investigate here a bit more gently. I don't want to destroy all this soundproofing. Right. I've decided just to leave the soundproofing that feels quite fragile because I've just seen there tucked away. This is the ABS sensor, uh, comes in. Get this swab out of my way. Oh, uh, where are we at? Yeah, it comes off here, goes down here, along the uh, radius arm. And then if I can just get in under the car, there we go. So you can just see it there, going into the back of the seats. So I'm so gonna bang my head. Hang on. Wow, I didn't. That's the first. So yeah, that's there. Um, I'm gonna undo this screw here and then hopefully this very zoomed in top part of the rear seat will lift off. Let's see what happens. Matter if I drop the screw. Uh, that's, that's loose. Let's see what happens here. Does this just. Oh, we have movement. Wow, one screw. It's pretty simple. Right. What, what do we have here? Oh, what the hell? Don't tell me I have to re remove the entire rear 
seat rear thing just to get to that ABS sensor. You've got to be joking, Jaguar. I really have, haven't I? Oh, you bastards. <laughs> oh, right. That means I'm going to have to go over there, do the same on that side, and then find out where millions of screws are holding in that whole rear seat thing. Hmm, it's going to be a much bigger job than I thought. Hold on one sec. All might not be lost. So that actually wasn't going up there. It was just running along here, held on by this bit of old duct tape. Let's do some mm, lovely serious hoovering in there after I finished to tape that back up and get that out later. Um, yeah, and then it disappears off into here, under here, which looks like I might be able to remove that by removing the seat belts. I'm still going to have to remove the... Uh, the other seat because I need to get to that bolt on that seat belt but then hopefully this center piece will lift out allowing me access to wherever that ABS sensor is connected somewhere in here oops look at this by the way I hope you can't see it on the camera this little signature there by uh, I feel like it's upside down. Maybe R R. Rolls Royce. Yeah, my car was built by a Rolls Royce. Let's see if that's finger loose. Yes, it is. Oops, lose that. Pop that down there in that sort of order. Um, I'm gonna have to climb in now, am I? Let's just put that. So much space. Let's sit on the center console, that's a good idea. Yeah, you can get to this other one without actually removing the top swab. Ooh, he says, stop slipping off. Right, I did remove that rear seat top as well. It actually just made access to that uh, seat belt fixing a lot easier. Are they? Just checking that's not some loose space or something that I'm about to lose, but no, that's part of the body. So, why is that side different? That's weird. Anyway, so there you can see the uh, passenger side ABS sensor that will be coming along here and the driver's side coming along here and hopefully when I oh, remove this Ah, there we go. Is that stuck to that? Okay. Aha! There we go. There are the connections. So from here backwards, we're all good. Um, but I want to disconnect this one here and then somehow. Oh, yeah, it's got like a, a grommet in a big hole there. So once I've disconnected it this side, I'll be able to pull all that out. Um, and because I greased everything when I put the rear subframe back together, I should have no trouble pressing out or rather even just wiggling out the ABS sensor, which is something you would never be able to do uh, when the car's been left, well, when the ABS sensor's been in for 30 years like mine would. Um, anyway, let's do that. Right, with a bit of uh, gentle persuasion and a bit of lube, I uh, managed to, oops, where's my finger? Pop that grommet out, which reveals a hole big enough to quite easily feed disconnected cable through. Go on. Go away. Don't be a... There we go. Right. So that's now out of the car. There's the other end of it there flopping about on the floor. Uh, we now need to go in here and remove the sensor. On the right side. Yes. So I rounded that there. It didn't feel very good. These are brand new bolts so i'm hoping because <laughs> this just popped in not that long ago i'm gonna have to do this with two hands i should be able to wiggle that out uh, i shouldn't need to get in here and press it out yeah just needed two hands just to snap it free um 
It did have me worried there for a sec. I thought it seized itself in already. Yeah, these literally weld themselves into this quite tight hole um, over the years. You can imagine that gets all covered in corrosion and they will just not come out. Um, so yeah, I just need to cut some cable ties and then that is that cable completely free. Right, so with that removed, um, you can see what I was talking about before. There's your ABS sensor ring. So obviously as the wheel turns, that turns and the intervals is what the sensor reads uh, on this end. Now, I've just cleaned this up actually. Um, I mean, you can see the damage from pressing it out. So I am 99% sure that that is foobard. However, um, I did just clean a massive amount of grease. Um, it must have picked up a big blob, blob of grease while I was pushing it in on installation. Um, so before I go blow 80 pounds, let's just zoom in so you can see see that zoomed in. Because um, it's not, I mean, it doesn't look that destroyed. But uh, yeah, before I go and blow 80 pounds, um, I will just fit that back in without putting the seats in and I'll go now that I've cleaned it um, and, I, and I know it's all nice and shiny like that, I'll go and give it a drive just see by chance if the ABS fault clears. Very much doubt it. Um, may not even be that denting issue. It may be that while I was messing about with ABS cables I've, I've actually put stress or something because basically in here is shielding and then your, then your actual um, data, data sensor cable, whatever you want to call it. <coughs> um, and I think if you if you stress these as well, uh, it can actually actually damage them as well. But anyway, yeah, definitely worth a shot before I go and buy a new one. Um, so I'm just going to put that back together loosely, get the wheels on and go take it down the road um, and probably no change. And that's fine. I've uh, put it back together loosely, roughly. Obviously, I've tightened that up properly. Um, I haven't bothered cable tying it there, but it is cable tied to the radius arm again. And it's also, I've not bothered to put the back seats in, but I have cable tied it, uh, where have I cable tied it? To there, so it can't, ooh, mess the finger, slip out that way. Um, and it's all safe to put the wheels back on and whoop, zoom out, drive down the road. And just, like I said, just for a laugh, just check one last time that cleaning that sensor off uh, doesn't make any difference. I know it won't, but you've got to try these things just to be absolutely sure. <gasps> Excuse me. And then, <clears throat> assuming uh, the code doesn't clear, which I'm sure it won't, uh, then we'll uh, look at sourcing a replacement sensor. And that will be the next video because I've already rambled on for about half an hour. So, yeah, hopefully I'll be fully fit and well by the next video. Um, see you all then. Bye.